Egypt is a country heavily dependent on tourism. Almost 300,000 Britons travel there every year, attracted by world-class diving around the year sunshine and centuries of history. But with this latest attack, the third in just over a year and a half, the fear is that tourists will be put off visiting the Red Sea Riviera. This winter, enjoy a luxurious holiday at Egypt's Red Sea Riviera Resorts. When you think of Egypt, this is the vision the country would like you to see. The authorities have spent millions rebuilding its image after a series of bombs which killed nearly a hundred people in the space of two years. The latest are not sure whether to go ahead with their holidays. I think the short term impact is probably looking at the next month or so. Uh, people might be wary about going in that area, but then after that when we sort of hit into um, later on in June, July when the peak season starts going up, I can see sort of bookings rising there. But although some won't be put off, there's plenty of concern amongst potential holiday makers. Um, I've got a sister who's due to go there to Egypt so only the next few weeks, so I think she's, you know, she's thinking about not going now. I don't think I would be going, Egypt would be the top of my uh, list at the moment, no. But the country's had to bounce back before. Last year's attack on Sharm el-Sheikh claimed at least 64 lives, most of them tourists. Yet the country still welcomes 604,000 visitors in 2005, and 2006 looks set to be even better, with bookings already up by a third on last year. Compare that to Bali's experience. They had 40,000 visitors in 2002, the year a bomb killed 200 people. By 2003, numbers were down by more than two-thirds, crippling Indonesia's tourist economy. The devastation on the island was immense, but many British tourists were left with no choice but to cancel their holidays after the Foreign Office advised against travel. Since then, they've reviewed their policy, now preferring simply to outline the dangers, letting tourists make their own decision. Industry watchers believe that's why Egypt's proved so much more resilient. Indonesia and, and Bali was um, being advised against for quite a long time, whereas the Foreign Office has assessed uh, Egypt and, and the Sinai in a very different way and, and doesn't believe that there's clear and imminent dangers to British nationals um, in, in, in that particular destination. So the official advice for those shopping for holidays remains the same. Go, but be aware of a high risk of terrorism. That forces tourists to take a difficult judgment themselves, but it is good news for an Egyptian tourist industry hit once again and desperate for a quick recovery. Rachel Amott, Sky News. So who is likely to have been behind these latest blasts in Egypt and what they're likely to be trying to achieve? Joining us now, security expert Neil Thompson. Neil, very good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. And it's a hard question. Who is likely to be behind them? Um, it could be anybody, and certainly the Egyptian authorities don't know who's behind it yet. Uh, the Egyptian authorities usually blame the internal terrorist misfits, the Bedouins, um, and they're very, very strong to say uh, it's not foreign terrorists who've come into their country. Um, it could be Al-Qaeda cells, but what you've got to realize with Al-Qaeda is it's almost a franchise, and it could be just a group which um, look at the ideologies of Al-Qaeda and go along with that um, kind of tag. Now your company, let me get this right, you advise individuals, businesses, um, holiday companies yes, on, on the risks of various places around the world. Yes. In your opinion, how safe is Egypt and particularly this region for British travellers to go to? I don't think it's very safe at the present time. We've had three bombings in the last 18 months which have caused scores of death. And there's no doubt the terrorists have been targeting the tourists as well as the Israelis and they're indiscriminate at, at who they target and therefore what we've got to look at now is they've targeted some main towns and they've now gone on to a softer target and that's what terrorists do all of the time they try and mitigate their risk of being caught yeah this is one of the things that struck me is um i was in um in a, a much larger resort there last year yes. and there's an awful lot of security um, on all the hotels on the major restaurants in the areas tourists go to as there is in the big resorts like, yeah. like Sharm. This is a very different type of place isn't it? Yes it is. 
the hotel industry and the restaurant industry have woken up to the fact that they are targets in themselves. So they put in a lot of extra security, barriers to not let cars go through, so you prevent the car bombing, which happened in the, the last, uh, last bombings. So you go down to um, a small town, which is um, with backpackers, hasn't got a lot of money, and the targets are just easier, so the hotels won't have the good security. They won't have the security gates there. And it's easier for the terrorists to have a look at it and think it's a soft target and I can probably do the maximum damage there and get out and uh, plan my next terrorist attack. In the Egyptian authorities seems to have moved pretty quickly. We have seen arrests today. We don't know what connection they have with this necessarily at the moment. Um, do they have the necessarily necessary intelligence, though, to find out who's behind these attacks and to stop them? Um, the, the Egyptians are saying we know they are terrorist cells in the Sinai Peninsula, but they're not telling anybody who they are. Now, whether that's correct or not, I don't know. You've just got to look at um, other countries like Israel has a very, very good um, intelligence system. And they put out warnings all the time. In fact, they put out warnings just days before um, this attack. So I would say places like Israel, places like uh, the UK, places like America have got better intelligence than places like Egypt at the present time. So you would say be sensible and heed the warnings, pay attention to them? Very much so. I think any visitor going into Egypt would have to uh, risk assess whether it's worth going at the present time. Okay, Neil Thompson from Red24, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much.